for God all the time to be his slave and to receive uh, his grace. He, he, he is, uh, his uh, uh, method of salvation was entirely different. To that point I shall come a little later. Uh, that is, uh, he, he did not ask us uh, to beg as a beggar uh, to get our salvation or anything from God. He, his psychology was this. That is, the slave, <coughs> no matter what he is, that is his circumstances, uh, whether he is in, in Texas or in Alabama uh, or uh, in, in New York, I mean uh, the, uh, the psychological slave, no matter where he goes, he will remain a slave. And what is the uh, slave consciousness? A beggar. So whoever begs, he is a slave. So he considered this question uh, that uh, in your church the most important and, and, and part of the service is to pray to God. He denied that. He said, foolish people. Why pray to God? Pray to yourself. Stand upon your own uh, uh, strong legs. Hold your moral spine straight and uh, uh, work out your salvation by love, by right living, by righteousness. That is, if you are not inwardly righteous, this God marked by words cannot save you. So Kapila uh, discovered that. That means uh, the key to salvation is in your inner uh, purity and honesty. If you remain a, a hypocrite, that is, if you only believe in the existence of God and if you preach that God, a lovely God He is, that will not, that will not be enough. But you will have to prove the God. That means you will have to incorporate the essence of goodness into your soul. To me, God is nothing but goodness. This word God is an abbreviated uh, word of goodness. That is, whoever can manifest this goodness, he knows God, and not these hypocrites and the fanatics. So we can derive all these beautiful lessons uh, from the teaching of this great man. He, as I have already uh, cited, was the first philosopher <coughs> who not only discovered but propounded and substantiated uh, rationally this uh, famous uh, theory of evolution. You know, uh, in Western world, uh, it is a very new theory and uh, it is not a universally accepted theory even today. You know, in your uh, country, which is uh, where um, the air is laden with freedom, uh, there are certain states in the South where if a teacher uh, teaches uh, uh, his class the theory of evolution, even if he mentions that, he will be committing a great, great uh, violation. The state uh, in, uh, in law is against that. And in this uh, liberty laden country, we have that, uh, that uh, those limitations. But in India, we are entirely free. Even today, in the midst of our uh, political and uh, economic bondage, <coughs> every person is free in religion, in a family. I can tell about my own family, my father, my mother, my uh, brother, uh, my sister. They each had uh, his own uh, dharma. Dharma, let us religion. By uh, that I mean uh, uh, dharma in its uh, eternal and psychological sense. It is this. In, in, you people have to know that because you always make that distinction of dharma, like uh, religion, that is Jew or Hindu or a, a Christian or a Mohammedan. But dharma is ingrained in man. Every person is dharmika. Every person may not be a, a believer in God or a believer in the hereafter, but <coughs> every person can conceive something, can idealize something. And that's something which a, a, an individual can idealize and uh, which he wants to realize, that is his dharma. The Kapila and Krishna and Buddha, they study 
discovered that. In your country, it is not known today. Dharma means they have a, they have a stereotype dharma. That is, uh, uh, 2,000 years ago, when God discovered that the whole world was working in sin, then uh, uh, he, he, he was moved to con uh, compassion. 2,000 uh, years before that, he did not have that compassion. Then he uh, sent, uh, uh, sent his own son uh, to give his life so that man's salvation can be made safe and secure. It is a silly idea. I can never, I say, how these intelligent people can conceive that idea and still believe in that idea. You men and women should study these systems of philosophy so that your intelligent, intelligence faculty may be, uh, may be uh, developed. You will be able to, uh, to reason yourself and to, uh, and to advance uh, values for things. Otherwise, we will uh, remain uh, in that sort of illusion. We will misrepresent uh, facts and things. <laughs> so, uh, this man, uh, in that age, uh, established this, uh, this marvelous and most uh, rational uh, theory of evolution, which is not even today accepted in your country, at least in some states. <coughs> what is this theory of evolution? That is, uh, it is the same as the uh, Spencer said, change from unity to right, from homogeneity to heterogeneity. I don't know, he must, he must probably got his idea from other sources. <coughs> he was a great student of Darwin. You know, Darwin, Darwin's theory of evolution has been explored. But this theory of evolution as propounded by this man, it has not been explored in the Because it is, uh, it is uh, built upon reason. No rationalist uh, uh, scientist or philosopher uh, can, can uh, challenge this theory. Because it was established so uh, on competent reason. Then his idea is that is um, uh, the whole universe the becoming of the one into the many and the re-becoming of the many into the one. Uh, uh, that is uh, our, uh, these modern uh, evolutionists, uh, they consider only uh, the origin of life. They are rather biologists. But this man, his uh, system covers all other uh, points. Not only it is not a biological explanation, it is also a cosmic explanation. What is the reason of the universe? And uh, uh, how uh, uh, it comes? Uh, what sustains it? What becomes of it? it he reasons this way. What is the origin? What is the origin? I mean, uh, uh, as individual and the, the cosmic origin. Then according to the creation of the city and Purusha, it's a marvelous thing. Prakriti and Purusha, Prakriti is the same as Prakriyatrix, this word for creation, for creation. This comes from that word for Prakriti. Kri means to make, the karma, and that is um, he denied this, uh, that is the, for instance, he assumed this universe as it is. Then he, then he uh, dissected, analyzed, and by, uh, by scientific and philosophical analysis, that this analysis both uh, material and mental, he reached uh, that first entity, which is even finer than the, than the atom. Maybe you have the, Bob, he discovered that too. But uh, he did not uh, commercialize it. He did not uh, want to use it for war purposes. But in his um, uh, theory of evolution, he find uh, the potentialities of, for all those things. Not only the, uh, uh, the things that have come so far, but there are many more things that are yet to come. And all these are already there. I'm reminded of that. Uh, uh, 
came up a hundred. There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So he left his philosophy open. But in that philosophy we find uh, the potentialities, the germs of all these uh, uh, things that can happen in the future. This one is a pretty case. That is the testimony of uh, eminent people. He did not believe in the testimony of, of God, or testimony of God's messenger like Gabriel. He said, that's all nonsense. The, uh, uh, when I say these words, uh, don't misunderstand me. I, I'm just uh, echoing his sentiment. Just think of the, uh, of the logicality of this man's uh, reasoning faculty. So, um, uh, he, uh, he would accept only uh, the evidence of, of men uh, upon whose uh, uh, truthfulness we can rely, not a man who has been already biased or prejudiced, either one way or the other, for or against. Is he would not accept his evidence, but a clear-cut, truthful, honest man. That is the meaning of after. <clears throat> then, you know, he said, by, uh, by these three uh, uh, means, uh, no one can establish the existence of God. Uh, according to the first means, which is direct perception, no one has seen God. And no one uh, uh, can say that he has seen God. That is, uh, any truthful person uh, won't be so positive about, the, about his description of God. By truthful, I mean a man who has uh, his own perception who, who uh, wants to know the first-hand knowledge, not the second-hand knowledge. <coughs> then uh, the second uh, is not uh, invariably accurate. And the third, uh, that is after uh, um, <coughs> also if there are good, thoughtful people, and if they say that there is a God, then he said, I accept that. You know, there was another great man who came after the Pima, about uh, 2,500 uh, years ago. A marvelous man, Buddha, you all know of him. Uh, Kopila <coughs> was, uh, uh, was uh, an atheist, but Buddha was an agnostic. He also did not believe in God. The other day I had a talk with a man, he sometimes calls me Rabbi, he's a Buddha man. He uh, is a great student of uh, Buddha and Buddha's uh, philosophy. But uh, one thing in Buddha's uh, teachings he cannot uh, appreciate, that is Buddha's uh, agnosticism. All those call it atheism. And I told him that uh, while he did not believe in a God, he lived godly life, not our uh, own day uh, hypocrites. They are either hypocrites or fanatics. By fanatic, I mean they uh, perceive something which does not exist, like the hallucination. Or hypocrites, that is, they believe that they, they believe they know. They don't know. They believe they know. So a truthful man must not uh, say that. Uh, you know, there are uh, these three great answers to that great question. Is there a God? One, one answer is, of course, positive. That is peace, that is a God. <clears throat> now this man who says that there is a God, his uh, opponent, can ask him how he knows it, what are his proofs. So he <coughs> his proof is this, that proof and, uh, Kofila rejected and he considered true. Uh, that is the primary uh, look at this universe, and when we uh, consider the uh, duty and ingenuity of it, then from <coughs> that we draw this conclusion or inference that there must be an equally ingenuous and <coughs> beautiful creator. But that, uh, that is, uh, this conclusion uh, does not stand to reason. The lawyer would call it the fallacy of the past and the uh, 
because in this world there is beauty and intelligence. You cannot say that is from that that the person who created this world also be a beautiful and intelligent person. That is, you have to establish many <coughs> intermediate steps to establish that that there is a creator of the universe. So according to Kapila, if there is a God, he could not create a God. Either periodically or in time. That is by will or by the way the patterns are made to occur. <coughs> then there are others who also deny the existence of God. I should say willfully deny the existence of God without giving any thought and study to this person. They are also wrong. They cannot uh, advance uh, uh, competent uh, evidence uh, to prove the existence of God. <coughs> but this person who takes the agnostic uh, view that is, uh, who has the uh, uh, courage and uh, the love of truth to say that I do not know who is the best person. As they say, the fools rush in, are angels fear to pray. That is, those people who make that hasty confusion about the existence of God, they are fools. So, uh, this man, he discussed this. Uh, most important question from Sumeri and, and then again he added another uh, point to this argument. <coughs> what is this God? He is a uh, Mukta <coughs> or Buddha or Bodha. Mukta means free and Bodha means power. So if he is free then he can have no desire for creation. That is he is not uh, limited by the thought or wish for creation. Just think of the reason that this man enjoys. If a free being, that is a being who is, uh, is after karma, that is a being in, a, in which there is no desire for anything, he is not in need of anything. So uh, in that person there can be no uh, thought of creation. And if uh, he creates, if he has the thought of creation, then he is not a supreme being. There must be another person uh, who is uh, higher than, than this person. And that way you have to go on and make, uh, make the fallacy of the creator as in itself. And then this question of, uh, of, of material. Granted uh, that uh, God uh, creates uh, some intelligence. Now, how, how, how does it get the material for creation? No one can, uh, can deny the existence of material here. He, he, he lies down on a soft bed, he walks on the nice uh, uh, basement. Who can uh, deny the existence of matter? It is so uh, real here. So how <coughs> God gets that matter uh, to create? You know, this Christian or the Jews or the man and the of God, the God at best is is the intelligent form, or the efficient form, not the material form. But <coughs> if um, uh, the efficient God, God <coughs> depends upon some other agency or the material form, then he is the supreme power. His power is not complete. He gets uh, something from another party. So, uh, uh, are we this way, this man finally establishes that that is the God. 